Taken at Southampton as the borderers waited to leave, the anticipation is plain to see. The night before, the biggest day of their lives. This is it. They're on the beach, plunging waist deep into the sea. And the 2nd Battalion South Wales borderers were part of the second wave of attack, waiting out at sea for their call. The salt had gone in the top of them, and the whole place was a black cloud of dust and everything like that. Uh, the shipping all sides were all firing rockets and guns and of every sort of description going off like this. And we were circling round, waiting for the 2C1 Brigade to uh, clear the beach for us. By midday on the 6th of June, they were called in. And despite a bad landing in waterhead height, they came ashore here on the codename Gold Beach, where you can still see the remains of the Mulberry Harbour behind me. It was their first experience of war, and they knew the stakes couldn't be higher. You've got to admire these guys. I mean, they are fighting in one of the most important fights for freedom ever conducted. You know, this was a hugely difficult thing to do, to get ashore in, in uh, Normandy against all that German opposition. Um, they had one shot at it. Some carried bicycles ashore. As a 20-year-old intelligence officer, Brigadier Somerville recorded this, um, how he was sent ahead. On the way up to the assembly area, we had 12 casualties from mortar fire and a couple from snipers. Snipers seemed to be everywhere. The man behind me, riding a bicycle, was hit in the head by an 88mm solid shot, which rather shook me, but I soon got over it. Their task was to secure a bridge eight miles inland at Vosa Ur. And here it is, with a plaque to mark its liberation. Out of more than 150,000 Allied troops to have landed on the 6th of June, remarkably, the South Wales borderers are the only ones to have reached their target destination by the end of D-Day. And their first major battle was just around the corner. On the 8th of June, they pushed on to a chateau near Bayeux, where Brigadier Somerville had a close shave in a carrier under fire from a German tank. I felt a, uh, my steel helmet pushed right down over my nose, and the next thing was I saw blood <laughs> dripping onto the, onto the sea underneath me. And I thought, oh my God, I hit more. But it turned out to be nothing more than a fresh wound. 90-year-old Sir Nicholas is the only surviving veteran we've been able to trace from his battalion of more than 600 men. As far as we know, the last watchman over this page of history.